Good morning, everyone, or maybe good evening or afternoon for some of you guys, depending where you are in the world. Uh, here it is still, goodness, what time is it? It is 11.15, so it is time for my second breakfast, um, because I am a hobbit, so, you know, we like to have first breakfast, second breakfast, 11 Z's, and afternoon tea. I see someone nodding, so you're on board. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> As you are filtering into the room, why don't you tell me where you are coming from today? I am located in Texas, though I have been here for like a really long time. And I'm actually from Germany originally. So hello to anyone if you are from Germany, especially. <laughs> but I'm happy everyone is here. So um, Greg is north of London. Hey, Greg. Uh, Salt Lake City, Jenna, awesome. Originally from Wyoming. I have not been to Wyoming. Erin, work in Arizona, but live in Iowa. All right, very cool. Caitlin, yes, Arizona. Lots of Arizonas, which I think we expect that. <laughs> awesome. So glad that you guys are here today. So let me go ahead and share my screen. So let me reorganize my screens because I am like the master of screens over here with three screens, um, which is awesome, but sometimes also very confusing. All right, are we good seeing screen? Yes, thumbs up. Perfect, thank you, Caitlin, very much. Okay, so today is digital mixology, which I thought that word was kind of hard to say. Um, <laughs> cocktail recipes with Photoshop camera and Adobe Spark. Now, I know it's early for some of you guys, and I know most of you are probably just here to um, get my cocktail recipe and I understand but please stay <laughs> even after you have it <laughs> okay so we are here from Adobe and we and you are here because this is learning human 2020 how has everyone's week been have you learned a bunch of stuff what has your favorite activity been maybe um I know we've had a lot of Adobe sessions. We have one more after mine today. So, and I saw several have participated and there's been some meeting going on. So love seeing your work. And today's plan is to learn something new. And what we're gonna take a look at is Photoshop camera and Adobe Spark video. And surprise, we're adding another app I decided this morning. <laughs> so hang in there with me. It'll be worth it. The other part, or the other plan is to have fun. The other plan is to day drink, just kidding. Although if you do day drink, I won't know it. So by all means, do your day drinking. And the last thing is ask questions if you have them. I do have several screens, so I will do my best to keep an eye on the chat as we are progressing. But um, Caitlin, Greg, if you guys can help me out with that, that would be totally awesome especially when I turn this way, because I have a model that I hired today to demonstrate some of these things for you guys. It's, it's gonna be fun. Um, so yeah, let's get going. Photoshop camera. This is Adobe's newest app. It is available for Android and iOS. Now I have a couple people who have said to me, hey, I can't seem to find it on the App Store, or I can't seem to find it on the Google Play Store. So. I actually realized something cool here just within the last like day or so. If you have your Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app running and you go to this photography category right over here and you scroll down to Photoshop camera, you can actually send yourself a link. You can do that via text or email. I saw a light bulb go off there in someone's camera. I, I saw it. <laughs> so I did not know about this until really recently, but this is cool especially if you're having trouble finding things. All right, this is all about Adobe Sensei. So all of the filters I'm gonna show you today and some of the magic I'm gonna show you today is very much Adobe Sensei powered. What is Adobe Sensei? It is Adobe's artificial intelligence magic brain on steroids. Um, it is really cool. And if you went to Adobe Max last year, then you will have heard Sensei left and right. So over here we have little Sophie. This is actually my neighbor's dog. And so the first image you see, 
no filter. And then the second one you see is actually one that I did with Photoshop camera. Super simple. I had to do nothing else but just activate the filter on Photoshop camera. And there we have little Sophie. All right. The other thing we're going to look at is Adobe Spark video. Um, I always say Spark comes in three flavors. So it comes in page, post, and video. Page is kind of like making a website with the parallax scrolling. It looks really nice. In fact, our page that we made for Learning Human is a Spark page. Um, I'm sure Greg will drop that here in just a second. Um, and Spark Post is all about um, creating like social media image ready graphics. The other, but that's not the only thing it's limited to. If you came to um, our four icon challenge earlier in the week, we actually showed you how to do the four icon challenge with Spark Post as well. Um, so it's not just limited to, you know, making a poster. You can also do other fun things with it. It is available in your web browser, Android and iOS. Now, I do prefer the experience, especially for video on my desktop. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna start on my iPad for Photoshop camera, and then we're gonna move to the desktop for Spark. And you will see how quickly you can put together videos using images, text, clips. You can even add a little narration, voiceover, lots of stuff you can do. Okay, I'm not a huge slide person, so that is like all my slides, and now we're gonna demo. <laughs> and then we'll show some leftover slides later. So let's see if we can, I got new glasses, so sometimes it doesn't recognize my face anymore. Does anyone have that problem? <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and just open this Photoshop camera. I have it down here just because I use it a bunch. I'm also, you guys, going to use an Apple Pencil today. And you will see, I will, I will tell you why I will use an Apple Pencil when I'm using it. So Photoshop camera, it opens pretty quickly. Um, this is obviously our original view. That's really boring right now. We will turn the camera around later and make use of our little model. But I just kind of want to run you through some stuff real quick. So like I said, Adobe um, Photoshop camera is all about using these filters. And the really cool part is, is that you actually have additional power over your filters. Um, so I know a lot of you probably, you know, use Snapchat and Instagram and all sorts of things like that. And I know there's filters available there, but I really think these give you more power. So um, when you open it at first, it actually opens like this. And you can see here at the bottom, I already have all sorts of filters downloaded. Now, if you do not have all these filters, it's probably because you've not been in it. Um, while I'm talking, can you guys tell me who's been in Photoshop camera and who is not? So just a yes or no would be awesome. That'd be cool. Okay. All right. So if I click on my world in the upper left hand corner, awesome. I get all sorts of lenses that I can select. Now mine all say open because I've already downloaded them. But the really cool part about this is that you should check back for lenses very often. Because just last night, I downloaded a new lens. So they're coming all the time. There is one in here I think that I don't have. Yeah. So if you do not have one, all you would do is hit details and then you can just add a lens. And that has now been added to Photoshop camera and you can make use of it. And again, lots of options here. So make sure you check all those out. Some of them you will absolutely love and some of them you'll go, what is this? <laughs> and I will show you a what is this? but it's still great in its own way. <laughs> all right, once you have downloaded, you also have the ability to manage all these lenses. And one of the things you can do is you can actually reorder the lenses. So if you have one that you like to use more than others, go ahead and put them in an order that works best for you. If you'd like to delete a lens, just swipe to the left and you will delete it. Very easy, very intuitive. All right, um, also gonna point this out for anyone who is maybe interested in this, you can be a lens creator. You do have to go through a little bit of a process, but um, you can hit that create a lens and you can become your own lens creator. All right, let's go ahead and work with this a little bit. Let me move some stuff around here on my messy desk. 
I'm gonna hit my little camera icon in the top right. And like I said, since we are not together, and we are not in the outside world, I'm getting a little inventive over here with my demo. So I have hired a little model who cannot be here all day, so we'll have to work pretty quickly. But here is our little model. And I'm, I'm very awkwardly sitting in my chair now, so I apologize. <laughs> But I have set up my tabletop photography um, box that I own because I am a photographer and I do a couple of product shoots in here and there. And this is just really fun to have for, especially during quarantine, you guys. If you have kids, you can take their like figurines and you can do all sorts of cool stuff. And this is really fun. So here's our little model for today. And then all we would need to do is we can select our filters here at the bottom let's go ahead and go with our vibrant filter and then we can just scroll through these so if you just swipe to the left you have all sorts of different options so you'll see that's the one we actually use with sophie um some of them are kind of crazy that's kind of cute in my opinion um there's also color echo so you can do some really crazy stuff um you can focus it so when you, you tap, that's any camera, um, native camera app too, you just tap for it to focus. You even have some studio light options and some of them will give you this little extra bar here on the right hand side once you've focused. So you can actually turn this up and down. And you guys, when I do my demos, I really exaggerate so I can get the point across. So if I were to do any editing for you, I'm going to exaggerate it. Probably not what I would deliver to a client, but this is to get your, my point across to you. So all sorts of cool ones. Some of them work better than others. So for example, this Cosmos effect, not so great right here, but I'm going to show you an image in a second where it kind of blew my mind how great it worked. It was totally awesome. Um, these are really great if you go outside just in your backyard, you have a little dappled effect. And I will say the more light you have in your environment, the better it is. So I actually have a little light that I have turned on right now. If I turn that off, you see how it's not masking as well? Let me turn my light back on. Oops, maybe if I didn't move it, that would help. I need an extra arm, someone bring me an extra arm. Do you see how the masking just became better when I gave it more light? Might be a little hard to see on your guys' end. But so this is part of what I was talking about with Adobe Sensei technology. So the masking is happening in real, real time. And the more light you give it, the better that is going to work. So let's find a little filter that we can use here for today. Maybe let's just do, stick with a little portrait. We'll kind of go easy on ourselves and we will just to take a picture. All right, and there we have our picture. Now, one of the other things you can do at this point is you can actually have some editing power. Upper right hand side, you see all sorts of power. So um, we're not going to go over Photoshop Express, but that is an option you have. It's another app. Um, the middle button is kind of an auto edit, sometimes it works really well, sometimes is less well <laughs> but that's okay because you have more power if you click on the little i don't know what to call this three lines with three dots on it you have more editing capability you can adjust your shadow your highlights your clarity vibrance exposure all sorts of things and if you are accustomed to using camera raw or lightroom this will be very familiar to you um the tricky part here that i have encountered Sometimes these sliders are a little finicky, and I have found that if you have an Apple Pencil, it's a little easier. So, see, I'm already struggling a little bit. You kind of have to hit it just right. So I can up my vibrance. Again, keep in mind, I'm totally exaggerating this to get my point across. Exposure, I don't really use a whole lot of clarity. Maybe we want a little bit more shadow. And then if you just tap on your image, you're actually seeing the before image after before after all right i hope that's coming across for everyone am i exaggerating enough yes thumbs up thank you caitlin <laughs> perfect all right 
So let's go ahead and hit done on here. Now the other really cool thing is I took this with a portrait lens. That doesn't mean I have to keep it. I can click on my lenses down in the bottom left and I can start actually applying different things. So I'm not restricted to what I just used in the first place. I can go back, maybe I want some bloom for my little koala. Um, pop art's really kind of fun. So you have all these options. The other option you have, sometimes on the top right, earlier we only had three icons. We had Photoshop um, Express, we had our auto, and we had our more adjustments. We now also have this little crosshair. What that means is the, we can make additional adjustments to what the filter has going on for us already. So for example, this what, I can pinch, maybe another one of those finicky things, you guys. <laughs> See, I can pinch, I can make it smaller, I can rotate it, I can move it around. So those are additional options that you have. Now that crosshair is not available for everything. Um, this one doesn't have it. You just have to kind of play with it. This one does have it. So yeah, all sorts of options that you have going on there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the images that I took. Melissa, just, just, so just before you do that, uh, can yeah. I just ask, uh, so, uh, some of those filters are animated, is that right? Yes, and that's one of the things I'm gonna show you. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, you're totally good. Don't even worry about it. So let's go here. These are a couple of images. I took my dog on a walk the other day, took my phone with me and decided to um, go ahead and take some photos. So for example, here's our before. Doesn't look very nice. In fact, I got rained on really hard that day. <laughs> we, we got back and we were soaked. <laughs> this is using Photoshop Camera. So this is what Greg was talking about. This is one of those animated um, filters that's being applied. Here's another one, flower before, uh, flower after. Now what I really like about this one is that I have this completely dead one and then this completely alive flower, which to me, I really thought that was kind of pretty. All right, now here is one of those things that is kind of weird. Again, here's our before. Who doesn't love a giant chicken? Come on, who, I mean, yeah, someone, yeah. I, I don't know your name, but yes. <laughs> who doesn't love a giant chicken? And when I took this photo at first, I said to myself, what in the world am I gonna use this for? And then I thought, you know what? This would be actually a really cool icebreaker activity for my classroom, because I could start taking these photos out in the world. There's also one with hamburgers falling from the sky and popsicles, <laughs> and I could assign maybe small groups an image like a giant chicken, and I could say, you must now come up with a story for the giant chicken. So icebreaker activity, but also kind of allows us to see how creative they can be like right on the spot, which to me, I think would be a lot of fun. All right, so we also, oh, here we go. This one is my favorite, you guys. So. Here we have the park I walk my dog to in my neighborhood. Like I said, really not the greatest day. <laughs> but then I did this. I saw someone go, ooh, <laughs> in the camera. <laughs> now, here's part of what I was talking about earlier again. Let's go ahead and open this just with Finder so we can really see it. Now, let me, oh, here, let me move this so you can see that too. Sorry, I'm just moving stuff constantly. Come on bar. There we go. Okay. What I really like about this is do you see how the shadows and the light on the grass changed as well? That to me, super cool. So let's go ahead and look at the before one again. I don't really see any of that, do you? Right? All right. Check that out. And look how beautiful that masked automatically. I didn't do anything. I just hit filter. <laughs> I did a little bit afterwards. I upped my shadows just a tiny bit because it was a little bit of an, my exposure because it was kind of a dark image. But other than that, I didn't do anything to this. I, and Melissa, I, 
I, yeah. I'm feeling slightly cross about all those hours I spent learning how to mask trees and hair and all those difficult things. I understand. I'll get over it, I know, because this is brilliant, but... I, I get it, uh, I get it. It's, it's all, but you know, even the masking of hair in Photoshop is becoming better because it's all about this sensei technology. I mean, every time there's a Photoshop update, it's like, oh, mask hair better. All right, I didn't know it could be better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Until you photograph someone with really curly, frizzy hair, and then you go, thank you, Adobe Sensei. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, this is another, so that's the same thing, just a different filter. But again, masked it beautifully. You know, I love the what it does to the grass down here. Um, you can also, again, not a great shot, kind of an ugly day, you guys. You can replace the whole sky. Suddenly it looks all better, doesn't it? <laughs> Suddenly you'd want to be there. Um, I've got one more. So this is again a before. And here is our after. We brought thunder into the mix. So that is pretty cool. Um, now to get to those, let's just come on, unlock using my face. Thank you. If we wanted to use maybe, uh, let's put her in the ocean kind of silly she's probably drowning that's, that's not good <laughs> but that's okay so at the top can you change you... the water line can i what change the water line can you make it so she's not drowning unfortunately i can't no oh no I, if i <laughs> you took... could just move the bear <laughs> right if i took the picture before you know i could keep that in mind do you know what i mean um unfortunately that's one of the ones i can't move but i do still have the power of you know the shadows and everything um, now, if I wanted this to not be an animated, uh, I guess, GIF, it saves it as a MOV, but I would just hit my play button here at the top and that'll stop it. So hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Any questions so far? Are we doing good? Okay, awesome. Perfect. Now, here is my surprise um, app for you because what we're going to do is we're going to now move to the desktop to actually use these images. We're actually not going to use these images, but images I already took <laughs> to make our cocktail. Cause I know that's why you're here. <laughs> Hope you're day drinking. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. And some of you are probably going to say, well, how do I get my, how do I get my images to my computer? I, what's the best way to do that? Well, you have some options. You could, um, save this to your camera roll and then you could airdrop it or you could Google drive it. That is a way. Seems kind of like a lot of steps though. And Melissa, there? you just, just when you were on that, Gus was just asking the question about, is it just four by three ratio or, and you just showed there's a whole bunch of ratios there. So there are yeah, where where we we got three by four and nine sixteen. Thank you for bringing that up. So that is the three little dots up here. Yes. Sorry, there's so much to show you guys and I took notes, but let's be for real. <laughs> that's just, you know, that, that's hard to follow. <laughs> okay, so um, I could come over here, save it into my camera roll, and then I could just airdrop it, I could Google Drive it, I could email it to myself, whatever. Seems like a lot of trouble though, for being honest. I could share directly to some social media platforms and I could grab it from there. Or I could share it to Lightroom. Who has used Lightroom Mobile? Anyone? We have one at least. Okay. Lightroom Mobile, another app. Um, this is another great app because it works on your phone, your iPad, it works on your desktop as an installed application and it works in a web browser. That is a beautiful thing. Yeah, Melissa does love Lightroom. <laughs> the photographer in Melissa is very happy with Lightroom. Um, I can share this directly to Lightroom. So that's what we're gonna try to do. But since this is a live demo, we know how that works sometimes. <laughs> saving to Lightroom, okay, so it is saving. Perfect, now we are going to check that that is in Lightroom by heading to Lightroom. There it is. So that is now saved in Lightroom. 
Now, the other cool thing about this, if you are taking photos, I keep looking at the time, we're good. <laughs> if you are taking your photos with Lightroom and you later on decide, hmm, I think I wanna apply a Photoshop camera filter to this, you can. So again, the other thing you could do is you can actually use stuff that's in your camera roll, which there's all my alcohol images <laughs> that we'll be using here in a second. Um, but you could take an image from your camera roll and you could apply a filter to it. But again, top right hand side, there is an LR button. Go ahead and hit that. It will take us to Lightroom. Hopefully, yes, beautiful. Now, let's say, again, Adobe Sensei smart, right? It can give us suggestions on what filters to use. So let's pick this dinner I made the other day. It was very delicious, if you're wondering. <laughs> we will open it. Okay, and now the bottom, well, first off, it ran an automatic kind of niceness <laughs> update. I'm not always a fan of that, so I often just unclick it, but it does it automatically. Totally up to you, just your style. However, you also see in the bottom left-hand side, not only do we have lenses, and it's going to be really hard to see, but that little blue circle actually has a cake slice in it. <laughs> so what is happening is Photoshop camera is saying, hey, this is food. You should try a food filter. So let's go ahead and click on our lenses. We'll scroll down to where, come on, keep going. There's our food filters. And again, you will see that little blue circle. Kind of hard to see, so I apologize. But those are our food filters. So it has recognized, hey, this is food. Use a food filter. I think that's pretty cool. It will also do that with portraits. Um, it, I did, it did it with a sky the other day too. So I had a picture of, I was just hanging out in my hammock and um, I took a picture and then I was actually able to replace the sky. So that is really cool. Um, you can run edits on it. And then you can actually save that to your camera roll if you'd like to. Um, we're not going to worry about saving changes right now just because I don't need it. It's just for demonstration purposes. Okay, again, we have a bunch of filters we can use. We can access our Lightroom, which is going to be the ideal way, in my opinion, to get these photos from Photoshop camera onto your desktop. Any questions about Photoshop camera so far? Because if not, we are moving on. And then I promise I will show you my drink video. <laughs> okay, awesome. Then we are going to not worry about that for right now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to open um, Lightroom. Okay, now just be aware there are two versions of Lightroom, but if you're gonna do this the way I told you to do it, you're going to want to use Adobe Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic. So go ahead and use Adobe Lightroom. Let me put this iPad away. My poor little drowning bear over here. Turn this light off. All right, sorry, these are a bunch of pictures of my little niece. <laughs> but you, we gave her a lemon, it was cruel. <laughs> but here you can see, so the photo that we took of our little bear is actually already in here. And this is what I did earlier. They're already in there. So that is a great way to get your photos across. Just wanted to make sure I showed you that. If you're not aware of Lightroom, if you haven't used Lightroom, go ahead and dig in here because there's a lot of cool power that can happen around here. So here's another little picture of my little niece. Oh, that's already edited, but that's totally okay. <laughs> so we have a before and an after, but you have all sorts of cool slider power in here. So even if you're not happy with what you're getting through the controls or just through your filter keep in mind that you have those extra controls because if you remember i showed you these controls in photoshop camera they were just on a line at the bottom all right cool now this is the desktop version of we're still good on time great this is the desktop version of lightroom if you want to access the um let me tell alexa to Sorry, she was reminding me that I have an appointment with you guys. 
I apologize. All right. If you want to get to the um, web version, all you would need to do is go to like Google and just type in, I don't think I pulled it up. No, that's okay. We'll just go there. Um, is it the Lightroom? There it is, online photo editor. Might take a second to load. But again, there we are. Great way to do this. Now, this is also important because what I'm going to show you next is Spark. Spark allows you to pull images out of Lightroom. Do you see how this is all coming together? <laughs> you would think someone maybe like plan this out. So, <laughs> all right. Now, here I'm going to show you what you've all been waiting for, which is my drink. And if you leave, I'll be sad, but I will understand. This is Adobe Spark video. You get there by going to spark.adobe.com. And all you, we can actually show you. Maybe. Okay, perfect. These are all my recent projects here. This is what Spark looks like when you first start it. And you just click on our little blue plus button over here and we are going to do a video today. And that's how we would get started. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is show you the video I made. Now, keep in mind, when I put together this video and I was shooting my, my um, pictures with my Photoshop camera app, I said to myself, I really want to show these people how many filters are available. I want you to get to the point where you go, are you running out of filters yet? It, 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 come on. So keep in mind when you watch this video, the images are crazy. <laughs> I threw consistency out the window when it comes to images. Melissa, but it's for, yes. Just, just before we show it, and just to raise the tension slightly, can, I, can we just ask um, if folks have actually used Spark Video before? If, if anybody has, yes or no? Um, I'm just interested to know if, if uh, Seth is not yet. Yeah. No, okay. No. Okay, that's cool. Oh, you're in for a treat. I, oh. I just want to, I'm, I'm stealing the show slightly, but, and then raising expectation too. But oh, I, think Spark, I think Spark Video is one of the best educator tools. Well, I should say free educator tools that I've seen for years. So um, there you go. Just make it your life a little bit more difficult. But. Oh, it's every day, Greg. Thanks. <laughs> so this is why we have to day drink, right? Okay. <laughs> um, I, Caitlin, does this, let me know if the sound works because I don't remember if I hit the little magic button. So let's see. A Caribbean vacation. Mm -hmm. There we go. We'll just start that right now. Here we go, everyone. Here's my cocktail for you guys. I know you guys like to sit around the campfire late at night. You should make this. Someone's already drinking. A Caribbean vacation. It could look like this, like this, or maybe like this. But maybe like me, you had your Caribbean vacation canceled this year. So why don't we bring a little Caribbean vacation to ourselves in the form of a cocktail? You'll need the juice from one lime, three parts orange juice, three parts pineapple juice, two parts light rum, one part Malibu dark rum, a splash of grenadine, and plenty of ice. Grab your shaker cup, and go ahead and fill it with ice. Next, add in all your liquids. Put the top on that shaker and give it a nice shake. Grab a glass, add some ice, and pour. Add a tiny umbrella because you deserve one. Enjoy your Caribbean vacation. And that is my video for you. So that is my drink recipe. You should drink it. I had fun coming up with it. And maybe I had to drink four of them to figure out the right <laughs> ratios. <laughs> but it is really good. You can add a little bit more rum if you want, or a little less if you want. Um, I especially like the Malibu Dark. So now that everyone knows I shop at Walmart because of my orange juice, no judgment here, right? <laughs> okay, let's show you how I made this video. Now, like Greg said, um, Spark is, one, it's super easy. 
And two is it's super powerful and it's really hard to screw up if we're being honest. Don't take that as a challenge though, please. Don't email me and say I screwed up Spark. Uh, <laughs> I hope you're very sad. <laughs> All right, so I showed you in the beginning. This is how we got to Spark. So we hit, we went to spark.adobe.com. On the left-hand side, we hit our blue plus button and we select the video. The first thing we can now do is we can um, title this. So we'll just title this great. We have all sorts of templates here that we can use if we would like to. And I typically use these if um, I want some inspiration. It's rare that I start with a video template. I do often start with a post template just because it's nice to get some ideas kind of flowing in my brain. But today we're just gonna go ahead and start from scratch. It's gonna take a second. This is always the awkward part. Oh, it went fast, yay. <laughs> Beautiful. Yay. Here is our Spark workspace. Very straightforward. Over here, you have layout. So you can change the layout of your slide. These are called slides. You have a couple of options here. And some of these buttons will, or these pluses will change according to the layout you have selected. The other thing you can do is you can select a theme. Now what this does, it applies an overall look to your Spark video. You cannot apply one theme to one slide and then another theme to another slide. You pick a theme, you are stuck with your theme, but they look great. Um, this is especially awesome if you have students who are maybe new to video, um, and maybe they're worried about, you know, picking colors or knowing where to put things. Spark does all this for you. So it's a super awesome introductory tool. Um, and you don't just have to make a drink with it. You could also say, what was your favorite summer memory? Or what was the last vacation you did? Or maybe you do a book report, all sorts of different things. You can have widescreen or square. Um, you also have some music that sparks spark sparks makes available for you to use um and you can click on here to get kind of a little preview. now if you've been using spark as often as i have eventually you will just know all these <laughs> and you'll start to do things like i'm gonna go use the youtube audio library <laughs> Great place to go because it has sound effects. Um, it also has a bunch of songs available. So the song you heard in the video I made, I actually pulled that from the YouTube audio library. And we are able to use those for um, videos and educational purposes. So great place to look if you are not aware of it. You can also turn the music off completely. Sometimes maybe you don't want music. Sometimes you do. The important thing to remember here is that when I show you how to do a voiceover or a little narration for your slide, you don't want your music to overpower your voice. So make sure you go back and listen because I have seen videos where the music has been really quite loud and I go, wait, what did they say? What? What? And that's, it's just not pleasant. It's actually quite frustrating. So make sure you go back and listen and turn down your music if you need to. Um, and also do your best to speak at a like consistent level. Um, that way you won't have to go, oh, I need to do it again. Oh, I'm tapering off the end. Personally, totally guilty at tapering off at the end sometimes. So that is something I really have to work on when I do these things. Okay, so we have, we've gone over layout theme, resize music. If we want to add additional slides, we just come down here and click our lovely little plus button. Very, very easy. Now, why don't we start this one? We'll go with a full screen. Um, we can, do I want a full screen? Let me think about it. Um, we can add a photo or a video. We also have the option to add text or icon. Let's go ahead and add a photo. Lots of options. I can upload my own. I can find free photos. I can use stock. I can access my creative cloud. Oh, look at the Lightroom button. Don't we love this button? <laughs> Melissa loves our Larry. <laughs> Melissa, we have 10 minutes left. What? Okay, I can wing it. <laughs> I, I got this. It's fast. 
Um, we can do Dropbox, Google Photos, Google Drive, all sorts of stuff you can connect to this so that you are connected and can get access to your images like, like that. But if you want free photos, we can do free photos. Maybe we type in beach. All sorts of photos come up and you can make use of these photos. Spark will not get mad at you. How about this one? And maybe we'll add some text. We'll call this, a, you know what? Typing's hard when people are watching. We'll call this beach vacation. And now we do have a little bit of power here to move this around. Beach vacation, there we go. I want a new. And maybe this time I want to make my layout a split screen. And I can put all these things over here, or I can put all these things over here. You can also add icons. Cocktail. I really like this one. I'm really partial to that. There you have a cocktail. Bunch of icons that you are able to use. And I wonder if this still works. Let's test it. Sometimes. Okay, so Zana is actually the German word. And so sometimes this will work. It will recognize different languages and pull up icons. But I do know they're still working on it. <laughs> but fun fact. Okay, you can add icons. If you don't like this anymore, you can delete it. Maybe you just didn't like it. That's okay. Um, you can also, if you already had an icon in there, so maybe you just wanted to replace it, just click another icon. Hopefully. We'll pick a different one. <laughs> okay. There we go. Just took a second. <laughs> but you can easily replace these things. You can yeah. add some more text over here. Um, we'll just call this a cocktail. I'm trying to do this quickly, but we're doing good. We're doing good. Okay. Let's add another slide. The other thing I want to show you is you can actually add videos to your Spark video. So you saw in the video I had, I had myself doing a little clip of putting ice in my shaker and then I shook it around. Let's add a video. Um, learning human, I think it's Spark Assets. There it is, clip shaker. Okay, now. This is the whole clip. The whole clip is actually quite long. And if you noticed in the video I showed you guys, I actually divided it up in two. I said, you put the ice in, then you add the ingredients, and then you shake it. So we can use our little sliders down here to select what part of the video we want. We can view it. That's about right. We'll go with that. We'll hit save. And now what Spark is gonna do, it's gonna take that part of our clip and put it into our Spark video. And sometimes it takes an extra second and we can't fast forward. <laughs> okay, so now, here we go. Very easy. What if I decide, oh, I really don't like that part. I want a different part. Come up here, click on my little pencil icon, click on my scissors, I can change what part I want. Really useful. Now, since I did have two parts in this, let's go ahead and duplicate this. And we will adjust this. We'll just move this over here. You get the idea, that's roughly correct. Now I did speed this up and I did that in rush and I'm gonna make Diana show you that because Diana is after me. <laughs> but that is something you can do. And we'll save it again. Come on, let's go. Shake, shake, shake. <laughs> we can also cancel it if it takes too long. <laughs> this is like the best part about live demos, you guys, because when you do a tutorial video, you can speed this up. And then people go, oh, that loaded really fast. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Not so great in live demos. Okay, so here we have it. And what it's gonna do, let's just go ahead and put this right here, just for demonstration's sake. You will see how this is going to just play very nicely. There we have our cup. You get
get the idea. If you wanted the slide to be present less, you can change, or on screen for less time, you can change the duration down here. You could upload your own music, like we talked about earlier. I'm just using one from Spark right now. The other thing I wanna show you, because I'm using Zoom um, audio, this might not work, but we'll see. If you would like, you can also hold down this little red microphone button in the middle and you can add a narration to your slide. This goes by slide. And the way I recommend you do this is you hold the button, wait just half a second, speak, wait another half a second, and then let go. Otherwise you get this really abrupt start and end and then it's, it's just not pretty. So let's, let's talk about this here. Today, we're going to make a cocktail. Today, we're going to make a cocktail. Really easy, right? If I don't like it, I can remove my narration. However, I could also just record over it. Today, we're going to day drink and it's going to be great. Today, we're going to day drink and it's going to be great. Do you get the idea here? Again, if I decide I don't want my narration at all, I can just remove my narration. You may have also noticed that my seconds adjusted automatically according to how long my narration was. Super smart. I don't have to do anything there. Okay, I showed you, let me show you one more thing. Yes, it does, Jenna. So I'm basically just recording over it and it just, it, it just erases what was there. Yes. Sometimes that, I, I did this last night and I just sat here and recorded like five times because my dog kept scratching her ear. <laughs> so when you record, make sure you're in an environment where you have very little distraction. Okay, I am just gonna show you, we still have time. I'm deciding we still have time. <laughs> Let's go ahead and go to Lightroom because I told you you could do this. Oh, look at all our images. They're all right there. I take weird photos sometimes. Um, this is the one we took today. There it is. We might want to change that layout because that's not great. Split screen's better. <laughs> all right. That is how the easiest way to me to get your images into here. Because like I said, personally, I just prefer to do Spark video on my desktop. Um, you can totally use the app, especially if you're on the go. That is awesome. To me, this is just easier. Okay, once you are done with your project, you can share it. And you should totally share it because it would be fun. Share it in the Slack channel. Um, you can give it a subtitle. Uh, you can put the author in here. Create a link. And what this is gonna do is gonna create a link for you that you can then share with your peers, you can put it in the Slack channel and show everyone what a great drink you made. It does take a second. Go, you can do it. Does anyone have any questions while we're still going? Um, Greg still mentions that all the photos are royalty free. Yes, yes. So all those photos that you can pull up from Spark, they are royalty free which is super awesome. All right, here we have our link. We can just copy it. We can share directly to Facebook, Twitter, Google Classroom, email. We can even embed it. Melissa, even though it's, I know it's a work in progress, a beautiful work in progress. Can you just copy that link and put it in the chat and then people can see how easy that is to just yeah. share, make and share a video. It's like, boom, that quick. As quick as you can record it, yeah. Just don't judge my, my demo work, you guys. You should give You're them already, the other. Already judged, you know that. Oh goodness! Oh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to day drink later. Okay, <laughs> you should share my actual video, Greg. <laughs> I will. I will do that. I was also going to mention that you can. Did you mention it can download as an MP4? That is my next step. You can also download this as an MP4, which. Oh, someone did this, and I. I agree with you. I don't know anyone's name. I apologize. <laughs> But yes, you can also download it as an MP4, which could be useful in other ways. We're just going to cancel that because I don't want to wait on it. Um, you could also invite others to look at this project via email. So I could go ahead and invite Greg and Greg could even work on it with me if he wanted to. 
but Greg does not have sharing capabilities. Only I can do that because I am the owner of the project. So it's kind of collaborative, but it still gives you the control whether you want to publish it in some yes. form. Yes. All right. Are there any, any other questions, anything that I can show you guys? I really think one of the biggest things is, you know, like I said, connect this to Lightroom because it will make your life so much easier in getting these photos in here. You don't have to go back and forth and try to airdrop and which I'm totally guilty of having done that because I think we are creatures of habit sometimes. And so our, my first thought was, oh, well, I'll just airdrop it. And then I go, no, Melissa, you have access to Lightroom. Use Lightroom. <laughs> so if you train, retrain yourself, you will get there. And Melissa, yeah. if people want to donate to the Cruelty Against Koala Foundation, do you have the URL that you could drop in for them? Yes, it's my personal bank account. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've just shared, by the way, I've just shared Melissa's, that second link is Melissa's actual video, the deep, the, the superb, better version. So do take a look at that. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> hey, like I said. Hey, Diana. <laughs> so yeah, for, again, for demo purposes, I totally go crazy most of the time just because I want to get my point across. But I did make a real one except that it's still a little crazy because I wanted to make sure you saw all the filters that are possible. And I hope you are tired of filters and you are like, I can't believe there are this many filters. <laughs> Thank you so much, Melissa. This is a very informative uh, presentation. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for being here with me today. I appreciate you. And I hope the rest of your week is fun. And if you do, even if you just take a photo with a Photoshop camera, I'd love to see it. I am following the Slack channel, but I am a little bit more of like a creeper. I don't really post, I just creep. <laughs> but I would love to see it. Thank you, Caitlin. And thanks, of course. And just a last note from me. So massive thank you uh, ahead of time to Diana, who's coming up next, and, and to Melissa for doing that session, and all the Adobe folks who helped Edge Game do all of that stuff. Uh, I'm just putting the link to our Spark page with all the assets, all the puppets, the characters, everything. So uh, enjoy playing with those.